Hi everyone, this is Chicho, and what we're going to do in this video is continue with the comic book reading set number four, and we're going to have a read through Daredevil number one. Okay, it's one of the key issues for Marvel comics from the 1930s, uh, from the 1960s, from the Silver Age of comics, and it's the first appearance and origin of Daredevil. It's the first appearance of all the secondary characters, uh, Foggy Nelson and Karen Page, and sort of introduces the daredevil universe uh, to us right and this book came out in 1964 and um, the script for this the writing for this is done by stan lee the pencils and the inks for the inside of this for this comic is done by bill everett um, and the cover for this is done by jack kirby and bill everett and uh, daredevil um, the people credited with creating daredevil are stanley and bill everett but by all accounts um or most accounts anyway jack kirby had a lot to say about the uh, creation of daredevil right so jack kirby should also in my opinion be credited with being one of the creators of daredevil right and we've talked about jack kirby a lot he's one of the most influential comic book creators in history along with Steve Ditko and Will Eisner and Stan Lee and Wally Wood and a number of other artists and writers as well, right? And um, Stan Lee, we know about, we've talked about him before. Um, but Bill Everett, I don't think, uh, I don't remember reading anything else from Bill Everett. Bill Everett's, um, he wasn't around since the golden age of comics. He actually didn't plan on getting into the comic book media, just like many other writers and artists really a lot of people that got into the comic industry in the golden age of comics they really didn't plan on getting into comic books there were artists or writers that you know were trying to find work and the comic book medium was one of the places that was hiring so bill everett actually um, in the 1930s he worked in advertising advertising he worked as a draftsman as an art director and then when he was having a hard time trying to find work he came across someone that offered him a job or asked him if he would you know if he could do comic books and he said uh, as an artist as a starving artist goes he said sure he'll do comic books uh so what he ended up doing he started working with um funnies comics he actually created uh, namor he was the creator of namor the writer and the artist for namor the submariner and then um you know he did some work there and then he worked with timely and atlas which were sort of the companies before marvel became marvel right so he did a lot of work in the 1930s 40s 50s or 1940s 50s and then in the 1960s he got involved with uh, marvel comics and he was hired on to do you know create new characters and one of them was daredevil and he actually uh, he actually did the pencils and the inks or the artwork only for daredevil number one okay uh, from daredevil number two to four it was joe orlando doing the pencils and vince Col coletta doing the inks and then from issue number five to number ten it was wally wood doing the artwork right so uh bill everett even though he's credited with creating daredevil he only did as far as I know, he only did one issue of Daredevil. He did return to comics uh, after trying his hand on a few other things and uh, start working a Submariner and uh, did some stuff on Hulk and Strange Tales and stuff like this. But um, unfortunately, he passed away in 1973 at 55, so he didn't get a chance uh, to really reap the rewards other than the initial financial uh, gains that he was getting when he started working for comic books in the 1930s and 40s and 50s right because at the time comic books were paying uh, good money relative to other types of artwork that people were doing uh, for artists that were doing either as draftsmen um, working for uh, advertising agencies and stuff like that so comic books were paying well and for the golden age of comics one thing we have to appreciate is comic books were sort of disruptive innovation that hit the industry where it was new technology coming into play which was allowing companies to do 
printing of comic books like this and it was something that came about with word balloons being added to artwork right uh, as compared to what the yellow kid was and we talked a little about this way way long time ago when we started uh, talking about comics but basically you can think about the comic book medium as it exists right now as being sort of disruptive innovation that came about in the golden age of comics in the early 1900s um, 19 i guess 15 20 30 that started hiring a lot of people and you know contributing to the economy okay so that's sort of the quick little lowdown on this uh let's crack this open as far as grape goes um and i have this um in uh, because we took down the this was in, in a frame right we we did a comic book framing video where i uh showed you guys how i framed these comics so i framed this comic and i believe in the lab, previous video anyway we took down those frames um, and I took this out of the frame and uh, replaced it with something else. And I put a little video together showing you guys where I replaced all these comics uh, or this comic with um, from the frame and some of the other comics, right? Um, so we took this out to do this reading, sort of did a rotation of the art. And when I bought this, I bought this at a grade of uh, 4, 4.5. And when I took it out of the frame, I sort of took a look at it. And I sort of agree with that grading as well. This is sort of, uh, I would say this is graded as 4, 4.5. And I sort of put these things in uh, my light. Uh, this is two millimeter, sort of to protect it from uh, UV rays and stuff and give it more protection on, you know, just at a regular comic book back, right? So let's bring this out. And let's take a look at this okay so it sits nice and flat all right just give you the feel for how tight this is right not bad the only major flaw from the cover there's some marble chipping going on down here right at the bottom right you can see it take a look you can see it there Oop, i don't want to do any more damage to it but you can see it there right the only major flaw with it is there's a hole on the torn out on daredevil's uh, knee right so Oh yeah, there's a little rip here as well, right? So I sort of looked at this, and I would agree that this is, you know, grade four, four point five. Uh, it's not a bad book. Sort of lower mid grade or mid grade, depending on who's grading it, right? There's a little bit of chipping there going on. It's not pure white, right? There are some issues out there that are nice and white, and the back. You know, there's no chunks missing. Take a look. Right. Nice and sharp. It hasn't been trimmed, right? I don't usually buy any restored comics. Well, I do have some, you know, tape on them, but I don't consider tape as being restoration. And sometimes I've bought books where I've seen sort of felt mark on them trying to hide sort of places where you know discolorations and stuff and that's unfortunate that people do that for me uh, it's silly but it's a good copy not a bad copy now let's take a look at this yeah. so let's read the, read the text on top of here and this is obviously approved by the comic code right censorship we've talked about that uh, you know regarding comic book censorship and stuff i put a someone asked me why we're seeing a resurgence in comics or have seen a resurgence in the characters and it's due to the medium uh, you know the tvs and uh, movies and stuff coming up but i think and video games of course 
Uh, but I think it has a lot to do with the color code disappearing, right? So Daredevil number one, here comes Daredevil, the man without fear, right? Remember when we introduced Spider-Man? Right. Now we continue the mighty Marvel tradition with Daredevil. Right. A worthy companion magazine to such all-time greats as the fabulous Fantastic Four. There's a Fantastic Four right there. Right. In this issue, you will meet the most unusual hero of all, Matt Murdock, right? Fun-loving Foggy Nelson, gorgeous Karen Page, right? Down here. Can you guess why Daredevil is different from all other crime fighters? And I showed you guys uh, a couple of years ago, I guess, before the Daredevil series hit on Netflix. Uh, I'm just going to put on my glasses here. Uh, before the Daredevil series hit the Netflix, I did a the first comic book haul video that I loaded up on this channel uh, to share with you guys was me sort of uh, buying 100 plus, a whole bunch of Daredevil comics from the mid teens up to the uh the mid 100s or so right i you know in anticipation of daredevil coming out and i bought those comics at an amazing amazing price <laughs> those comic lots right i think it was 100 plus or close to 100 comics and i bought them for i don't know i can't remember two bucks a pop right and in this comic spider-man and fantastic four i think they only appear on the cover right and jack kirby is the person really that put the cover together okay and bill everett uh, it contributed a little bit to it as well right so daredevil and that's the check this out it's almost the same right the first page and from what i've read Kirby is the one that did the first design for this and they were sort of running behind schedule and trying to meet deadlines so what they ended up doing was using Kirby's sketch of here right and just the initial sketch to put it on the cover and then Bill Everett sort of finished off the page right so depending on where you're getting the information from some people say Jack Kirby is the one that first drew this. Some people say Bill Everett is the one that first drew this. Right. Written by Stan Lee. Okay. Illustrated by Bill Everett. So he did the pencils and the inks. Lettered by Sam Rosen. Okay. And remember this cover? If you are one of the fortunate few who bought this first copy, you probably wouldn't part with it for anything amazing spider-man number one right and i've held this before i had the opportunity to buy this before okay and that's a story i'll tell you one day right that was a university i was given the opportunity to buy this but i'll tell you that story it's a good story so before we get into the reading of this let's again read the fine print and there's browning on the pages here right and I'm not gonna, you know, we're not gonna flip through this because we're gonna read the whole thing. I usually when I show you guys books, we do flip through it, but we're not gonna flip through this one. We're gonna read the whole thing, so I don't wanna, I don't want any spoilers on this. So let's read the fine print. I'm gonna be pretty gentle with this, okay? Um, because I don't wanna do any more damage to it. I like it being mid grade to a degree, but it is well worth it. Daredevil is published by Olympia Publications Incorporated, Office of Publication, 655 Madison Avenue, New York, New York. Published bi-monthly, copyright 1964 by Olympia Publications Incorporated. I believe that's the first time we're seeing the Olympia Publications. I don't remember reading Marvel Comics with Olympia Publications in there before. 
right? Uh, Incorporated, 655 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, volume one, number one, April 1964. Issue price 12 cent per copy. Subscription rate $1.75 for 12 issues, including postage. Foreign subscriptions, $3.25 in American funds. Wow, that kicked up a lot. No similarity between any of the names, characters, persons, and or institutions appearing in this magazine with those of any living or dead person or institution is intended and any such similarity which may exist is purely coincidental printed in the usa by the eastern color printing company and we've read the comic books by eastern a color printing company one of the first comic books readings we did the jingle jangle right and it was published by eastern color printing these guys were huge in publishing magazines and comic books right millions that would print a print a month company waterbury 20 connecticut martin goodman publisher okay and the back pages oh yes look at this advertisement <laughs> mathematics made simple nice comic books and mathematics your first volume of made simple self-teaching encyclopedia now ready mathematics made simple so what is this fill the gap in your family's education with the amazing made simple self-teaching encyclopedia your first volume only one dollar you get a little check that out it's mathematics nice Cool. Are these all mathematics? I don't think so. Look at this. This is electronics, English, Spanish, chemistry, everyday law. So each one has a different thing. Oh, let's read this. I gotta read this little little thing here, right? Just because because we do mathematics. So let's read uh, just this part of it. Simple everyday mistakes in arithmetics, algebra, geometry, and trigonometry can cost you time, money, job promotion, and good school grades. This handsome, expertly prepared book covers shortcuts to add, subtract, multiply, divide, whole numbers, fractions, decimals, algebraic expressions, uh, sign numbers i guess they're talking about positive and negative numbers read and interchange fractions decimals percentages find the areas of a plot of land room etc ratio proportions algebraic equations definitions of mathematical expressions how lo logarithms simplify multi what how logarithms simplify multiplication division how sly rule makes figuring fast figuring fast easy accurate axioms theorems constructing geometric figures for everyday problems solid geometry trigonometry to measure large or distant objects angle functions for practical problems representing quantities and sizes on graphs and scales combinations and permutations probability and much more so this is basically all of high school mathematics unfortunately in my area they took out probably a huge chunk of it anyway it clearly and quickly teaches you everything about the subject there is no confusing language you'll also use this book often as a handy reference send on approval send on approval as soon as we receive your res reservation form right mathematics and that's what i plan on doing right creating a whole series on mathematics and covering all those topics right cool but for now comic books let's do some comic book reading oh someone's honking their horn outside the origin of daredevil remember this cover 
if you are one of the fortunate few who bought this, this first copy, you probably wouldn't part with it for anything. The cover, what does it say? Two great feature length Spider-Man thrillers. What's Spider-Man saying? It's very small print. The Fantastic Four think I'm trapped, but they don't. They don't something my real powers. The chameleon strikes. All right. If we ever get this, we're reading it. I don't care what grade it is. Right. <laughs> If I ever get my hands on Amazing Spider-Man number one. So, written by Stan Lee, illustrated by Al Bill Everett, and lettered by Sam Rosen, right? Now we can congratulate you for having bought another prized, prized first edition. This magazine is certain to be one of your most valued comic mag possessions. In the months to come, Daredevil. Let's look at this. Let's read this. You are looking at the entrance to Fogwell's Gym on New York's Lower West Side. It is here that our story begins, a story different from any you have ever read before. Fogwell's Gym. It's a boxing, a boxing training facility there. In a dingy room, dingy room above the gym, four men play a game of poker little dreaming of the shock which waits them come on porky we haven't got all day the fixer may be here soon keep your shirt on sam i don't rush for anyone who do you think you're kidding you know when the fixer snaps his fingers we all hop if we want to stay healthy. Let's kill these chips. Sam's right. Any, anyhow, I'm bushed. Let's knock off for a while until, hey, what's that noise? Creak in the background. For the love of Pete, what do you call that? Someone's appearing, right? That's Daredevil. Check that out right there. We are in the wrong place, Buster. We don't use costume wrestlers here. I've seen nutty get up when that one takes the kick. But look at his build. Hang around, fella. Maybe the fixer can use you. I intend to do that. Just that. When I'm through with the fixer, he'll never be able to use anyone ever again. Hey, that guy's here looking for trouble. The fixer won't like that. Indeed. A Daredevil's costume, original costume, was yellow. came red in number seven right he must be some kind of nut toss the costume clown out of this out of his ear porky it'll be a pleasure boys i can use the exercise hey what the if it's experience you want fatso you've come to the right guy throws over his head 
and Daredevil comics are known, are known for their amazing fight scene sequences. Frank Miller really kicking it up a notch. Stop, cut it up, let go. Oh, he's grabbed his legs, spinning around. I'll be glad to, little chum. There, is that what you wanted? Woof, throws him into the, the other three guys. Nice motion. Mister, you just bought yourself a big pick of trouble. Whittle or grab that gun. Sorry, playmate. You'll have to move lots faster than that. If you're going, if you're grabbing a gun, I guess I can use a simple little belly club. There. No sense wasting expensive bullets on a nobody like me. Wham. Has like, oh. You punk. I'll fix it so you never make another wise crack again. Jumps right. But your tongue, Porky, think what a loss that would be to the world. Stop wasting your time, Porky. I'll take care of that crub my way. Throws a chair. Don't bet on it, pal. Surround them. He can't stand all of us. All of us at once. Now's our chance. While he's catching his breath. Get him. They're about to jump them all together. Wham! He jumps up. Grabs the ropes. You fellas sure have a funny way of making a stranger feel at home. In fact, if I didn't know better, I'd begin to suspect that I'm not really welcome here. Oof, nails the guy in the back. Oh, that would hurt. Look at the arch in his back. Okay, mister, we've had it. Now, who are you? Now what do you want? It ain't possible. Nobody can fight like that. He must do it with mirrors. <laughs> right. Now that playtime's over, I'll hang around until I find the fixer. As for who I am, you can just call me there. Daredevil, a brand new name in the world of superheroes, but one such, one which is destined to reach the very heights of glory, for Daredevil has a special type of power, such as no adventurer has ever had before. To learn what is what it is, let us go back a few years, back to the origin of the man called Daredevil. The year is 1950. As a prize fighter known as Battling Murdoch talks, talks to his eight year old son Matthew. But I don't want to study now, Dad. Why can't I go out and play ball with the kids? I can study later on. No, Matt. You'll do it now. You'll study every chance you get here. Beautiful art. Details. 
be levered. He worked as a draftsman, right? And then as an advertising. I promised your mother before she died that I wouldn't let you grow up to be an uneducated uh, pug like me. You're going to amount to something, Matt. But I want to be like you, Dad. I'm proud of you. You're the greatest. Don't say it, boy. I'm past my prime. I have no feature. Nothing I can do but become a punching bag for younger men. He's got his boxing shirt on, battling Murdoch. But I won't let that happen to you. You're going to stay, become a lawyer or a doctor. You'll be somebody, the somebody that I can never be. Now, now to go back. Now, go back to your room, son, and get busy with your books. Okay, Dad. He puts down his bat and his mitt, right? He was going to go outside and play baseball. Continued after next page. And that's something a lot of comic books did, right? They told you to continue after the next page. Advertisements. Two more triumphs for Marvel. Tales to Astonish. Giant Man. It's number 55. Giant Man on the Trail of the Human Top. Strange Tales. The Human Torch Meets the Iceman. Oh, that's a great issue. Strange Tales 120. Right. Training for Big Pay Made Simple. Mechanic. A quick new way to get into auto mechanics. A lot of educational stuff going on back then, right? As is now. So, Matt's going to his room. Right, to study. Let's continue on the read. So a little hourglass here, so time has passed by, right? Little indication, little book, lots of studying. Right. Very nice little cool little details. As the years roll by. Matt Murdock does his best to live up to his father's dream. He becomes top student in his class, forsaking all sports, all athletic activity, although his heart aches for the thrills of the baseball diamond and the gridiron. If only dad would let me try out for the team, I'd be as good as any of them. I just know what I would. He's behind the fence talking right? or thinking. But I can't go against his wishes. I can't defy dad after all he's done for me, after all his sacrifices. I've got to be the son he wants me to be. And so young Matt Murdock goes his lovely way, spending every minute he can spare with his books never sharing in the games of the other teenagers. He's at the window thinking. The kids are Indian, Indian wrestling. If only I could go down and join them. Indian wrestling, wow. Haven't heard that for a while. No one can be as cruel 
as an unthinking youth. It is only a matter of time before the neighborhood kids make up a nickname for Matt, a name he will long remember. Well, well, if it ain't old Daredevil himself. Huh. Hi, Daredevil. Be sure you don't tire yourself out turning all those heavy pages in your school books. Matt starts thinking. They're laughing at me. They think I'm a sissy. Then, when he reaches his room, someday I'll show them. I'll make them eat those words. I'm as strong as any of them, as rugged as any of them. And I'll prove it. Someday I'll prove it. His, books. his anger boiling with him, the resentful youth strikes out at his dad's punching bag with the pent-up fury of a thunderclap. The day will come when no one will ever laugh at me again. When, hey, I, I knocked the back clean off. Wow, he knocked it clean off. Check that out. Then, after repair, repairing the clasp, what a numbskull I am. Why don't I do this every day just to keep in shape? It is only natural that the son of a battling Murdoch should take to vigorous training the way a duck takes to water. And so, in the months that follow, while his dad is out of town on the boxing circuit, check that out. He does barbells, rope skips, cable pull, the bag, he punches the bag, rowing machine, the bike. Nice. No, but, mm, but no matter how hard he trains, the determined teenager never forgets the goal he has set for himself. How were things at school while I was away, Matt? Everything all right, son? Guess so, Dad, if you call straight A's all right. Matt, I know how tough it's been for you. For you while the other kids were out playing and having good times. But the day will come when you thank me, boy. You're going to amount to something just the way your mother would have wanted you to. But there's one problem which Bowling Murdoch keeps from his son. I haven't been able to land a fight in weeks. I'm getting too old. No manager will take me. But I can't let Matt down. I've got to keep fighting until he gets through college. I owe him that for the way he's worked all these years. Just kicking a can down the road, right? Nice symbolism. Finally, in desperation, Murdoch makes a final decision. Look, Murdoch, you're all washed up and you know it. The only guy who'll manage a has been like you is the fixer. And the fixer is the guy earlier who daredevil was waiting for right the fixer i always swore to myself that i'd steer clear of a guy with his reputation but now i've got no choice i have to get a fight And so, well, well, 
if it ain't battling Murdoch. Ten years ago, you kicked me out of your dressing room when I offered you a deal, but I knew you'd come around sooner or later. Sure, I'll get you some fights, and you won't have to take a dive either. Just because I'm really a soft-hearted fool, here, sign this contract. With trembling fingers, the middle-aged fighter grasps the pen as a drowning man would clutch at a straw and then signs his name. This is the luckiest day of my life. Now I'll be able to send Matt to college. I don't have a thing to worry about, he says. Excitingly, the joyful prize fighter rushes to his apartment only to find Matt. Wait till I tell you the news. Matt, he's not here. Let's see this. As fate would have it, Matthew Murdoch, at that very moment, is returning from the library taking the most important few steps of his entire life. Gee, you'd think someone would help the blind man across the street. Say, mister, can I give you a hand? And the background is a truck cozy cleaners. He didn't seem to hear me. He might be deaf too. Say, there's a truck turn in the corner coming towards him. Here's another truck. What does that truck say? Ajax Atomic Labs Radioactive Materials Danger. Hank, slam on the brakes. Someone's crossing in front of us. I can't. Something's wrong. She won't stop. Screech. Without a moment's hesitation, his subtle muscles Responding to the emergency with the speed of thought, Matt Murdock hurls towards the scene of impending disaster. He's driving his bike. He won't have a chance unless I can reach him in time, Matt says. The swift-moving teenager hurls the unsuspecting blind man out of the truck's path but he himself is not so fortunate Whoa. he saved that man's life most heroic act i've ever seen but a cylinder fell from the truck it struck his face is is it something radioactive don't just stand there someone call an ambulance Later, at Municipal Hospital. Your son is a very brave lad, Mr. Murdoch. You must try to be equally as brave as the brave in the days ahead, the nurse says. If, if only it had happened to me instead of him. If only I had been there. Don't, Dad. It could be worse. Even if I do lose my sight, at least I'm alive. And days later, after the injured boy returns home. Good news, Matt. The doctor's report says that an operation may restore your sight in a few years after the tissues have healed. That's great, Dad. Until then, don't worry. I'll still keep on my studies using books written in Braille. I'll get my diploma yet. You'll see. He smiles.
But in the days that follow, Matt Murdock studies more than the written word. He begins a still he he begins a still more intensive program of physical exercise. Boom! He hits the punching bag. I don't get it. Ever since my accident, I seem to be able to do everything lots better than before, even without my sight. It's as though nature made all my senses more, far more powerful to compensate for my blindness. Thanks. I wonder, could the radioactive elements who struck my eyes have anything to do with my increased powers? Strange, stranger things have been known to happen. Just bouncing around everywhere. There. But whatever the explanation, it is supremely confident, self-assured Matt Murdock who finally graduates from high school and is eagerly accepted by a director of admissions of State College, where we find him sharing a dormitory room with his new buddy, Franklin Foggy Nelson. Matt, you old hound dog, how do you do it? I study like a demon, but you just breeze through the courses with all that, with all the top grades. Foggy says, I guess my dad deserves the credit, Foggy. He had me study so hard when I was younger that it all seems to come easy to me now. And I won't be surprised if the radiation I absorbed in the accident doesn't have something to do with it too. Everything seems so easy for me now. All my senses are razor sharp. Check out in the background, there's an army placard, right? And that's probably a pinup model right there. Nice details in this comic. My hearing is so acute that I can tell if someone is in the room with me just by hearing the heartbeat. And I never forget an odor once I smell it. I could recognize any girl by her perfume or any man by his hair tonic. Even my fingers have become incre incredibly sensitive. I can tell how many bullets are in a gun just by the weight of the barrel. While my sense of taste has become so highly developed that I can tell exactly how many grains of salt are on a piece of pretzel. Plus. But my most important new ability is in the form of a built-in radar that seems to have developed, enables me to walk around safely without bumping into anything. Ping, 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 ping. It is sensing that stuff. Right. I feel a strange tingling sensation when I approach any solid object, warning me which way to turn he's not even using this cane right say son want any help crossing the street no thanks i can make it ping that's what we're seeing in a ping little does he suspect i can cross more safely than he can for i have every one of my remaining senses working at absolute peak capacity
Meanwhile, the career of battling Murdoch takes a surprising turn. Look at all the paper headlines, right? Madison Square, Kid Murdoch versus Pedro, probably Garcia's or something, Thursday, October something, 10 p.m. Murdoch KO Sims in night. Murdoch something 12th knockout. Kid Murdoch favorite. Here's your dough, Murdoch. Keep it up and you may become be champ someday. That's the fixer. I can't believe a fixer. It all seems like some kind of miracle. Then after Murdoch leaves. Wait till the old fool finds out that all his fights were setups. You paid his opponents to take a dive. Sure, I did it to give Murdoch a build-up to draw the crowds, but he'll learn the facts of life in his next fight. That's where I get him to take the count. And a few days before battling Murdoch's late, latest fight, footsteps, I could tell by the weight, the distance between each, is Foggy Nelson. Hey, Matt, wait up. I want to read you the sports headline. It's about your dad. He's fighting Dynamite Davis tomorrow night in New York. How about that? Want to go? I've already got the tickets, Foggy. One for each of us. <laughs> nice. I read the headline before just by running my finger over the page and feeling the impression of the ink. What does the headline say? Daily Chronicle. Kit Murdoch to face Davis. Number two contender. Semi something. That garden promises thrills, the paper says. And so the next night, the fixer said I have to take a dive in the first round tonight. And the corner, the middle eight sensation battling Murdoch. But my boy's here tonight to root for his dad. I've always trained him to do his best. I can't dis disappoint him now, he thinks. Murdoch, you fool. Take it easy. What are you doing? That's the fixer. If you try to double cross me, you'll live to regret it. You're supposed to dive now. Here, dive. He's winning, Matt. Your dad's pulverizing him. I know it. I could follow the fight perfectly by hearing the sound of each blow, each footstep. Matt's laughing. It's my one chance, maybe my last chance, to do something to make my son proud of me. I'm not going to fail him. I'm going to win. Do you hear? I'm going to win. Wow. Wow. Nails him. Nice motion. Call it a miracle. Call it pure willpower. Sheer determination. Call it what you will. But a few seconds later, the winner battling Murdoch. And then in the dressing room you did it dad you proved that nothing's impossible if a man has the courage if a man is not afraid he says i wanted you to be proud of me matt my son oh they double cross the fixer but in the back seat of a dark sedan which quietly pulls away from the stadium nobody double crosses the fixer you know what to do slade yeah, boss, I know what to do. This is hard 
个。few minutes later as Matt's happy father leaves the gym no matter what the fixer does I won't care my son is proud of me nothing can ever change that crack he gets nailed suddenly the sharp explosive sound of a gunshot destroys the silence of night and ends one man's reverie forever within seconds is battling Murdoch. He won the big fight tonight. Oh, they just killed him, just shot him. He's got his gun in his pocket right here, right? Check that out. It's battling Murdoch. He won the big fight. Somebody must have been awfully sore about his victory. And we're not going to rest until we find out who. Nothing I can do for him. It's too late. They're pulling a sheet over him. He's dead. Later, after grieving Matt Murdock has heard the tragic news, you've got the snap out of it, Matt. Pull yourself together, fella. That's what your dad would have, would have wanted. We'll be graduating soon, and my dad's setting me up in a law office. I want you to join me, Matt, as my partner. It's foggy. Finally, the big day arrives, graduation. Matthew Murdoch, I'm especially proud to congratulate you for being chosen class valedictorian. You have proven that an alert mind and a strong will can con conquer any obstacles. Thank you, sir, Matt says. And he's going to be my partner, boy. Can I pick him? That's foggy in the background thinking that. Big smiles on him, right? Here's the staples for those of you interested in the grade of this. The staples are very nice and tight. Right. Let's check it out. Let's continue this. So he graduates. The next day in New York, we're in a business, Matt. With your brains and my dad's money, nothing will stop us. Nelson and Murdoch attorney at law the door says come on in and meet the secretary i hired Ooh, there's karen my name is karen page mr murdoch i hope you'll be pleased with me her voice is like music from the sound she's five five feet four young and i know she's lovely enough Later that night, in the furbished room Matt has rented near the office, I'll never be able to con concentrate on my law work until Dad's murderers finally brought to justice. But years ago, I promised Dad that Matt Murdoch would use his head, never become a fighter, never depend on my strength the way Dad did. seen this before yet no coin I can't break that promise I made and yet with my agility my extra sharp senses there's so much I could do I can't let all my powers go to waste wait i have it snap right. i'll see to it 
that Matt Murdock never goes, does resort to force, but somebody else will. Somebody totally different from Matt Murdock. All I need are some old shirts which I can stitch together. I'm no Betsy Ross, but I should be able to handle this. Lucky my touch is so sensitive, he says. I can even blend the colors for each colored fabric has a different feel to me. That's cool. A few hours later, there, whenever I whenever I don this costume, I'll no longer be Matt Murdock, but I'll need a new name. What if the kind what if the kids in the old neighborhood could see me now? The kids who taunted me, called me Daredevil. Wait, that's it. Daredevil. Right. They called me, but they meant, meant it as an insult. Well, that's who I'll be. The name is perfect. I guess that's probably why he doesn't have a D on it yet right and then he puts the d on it afterwards right because there should be a d on his chest right there right but he hadn't picked it yet that's cool i thought that might be an editing mistake but i think it's there for legit the costume is tight enough to wear under my clothes if need be i'll just make a few finishes finishing touches on the headpiece when i'm through daredevil will be recognized everywhere So he puts the D on the chest. That's cool. Even though I don't need it, I'll continue to carry a cane as Matt Murdock. Hmm. That gives me another idea. That cane would make a great weapon for Daredevil. Through the long night, the unseeing man works his super sensitive finger, fingers molding and manipulating his cane far more precisely than any normal craftsman's, craftsman might do. Flexible handle, there's a little arrow showing that that's a flexible handle. Hinge, he's got a hinge on the cane. See that line right there? I'll hinge it in the middle, design a sheath for it. It'll be the perfect all-purpose weapon. Says the beginning of Daredevil's acrobatics. Right? I can use it in a hundred ways. It's perfect. Look at him using the cane. Bong. You can throw it balance on it use it as a hook right that's cool and now for the job at hand i've got to bring my father's murderer to justice tomorrow saturday the office will be closed so i'll start in the morning and i know just where to begin he says And so, Dad's manager was a man called a fixer. I have a hunch he deserves that nickname. How confidently that blind man walks through the streets. That lady's thinking right there. Unerringly guided by his atoma-induced atoma radar sense, Matt Murdock reaches his destination. This be a, this will be a Daredevil's first test. Now to chan, change clothes in an alley and see if I'm as good as I think. And so we return to the present as our Daredevil saga continues. Right, so we're back to the beginning. Now, do you take me to the fixer or, or nothing? We've had it, fella. Just hang around. He'll be here any minute, he says. Okay. 
somebody asking for me? What do you want? The fixer says. Hey, boss, dig the get up on that clown. He looks like trouble to me, fixer. Want me should lean on him a little? That looks like the same guy that killed Matt's dad, right? My associates don't seem to like you. Your looks, mister, you better talk fast. From the heavy tone of his voice, his beefy, rough, I hear breathing on each side of him, so the other two must be flanking him. That's not thinking. Correction, fixer. You're the one who's going to talk. to know what arrangements you had with battling Murdoch battling Murdoch what's that to you it ain't healthy to mention him around here he must know something boss I'll take care of him that guy pulls out a gun the sound of a suit jacket being drawn aside fingers touching a metal object must be a gun butt and a shoulder holster. Matt's thinking. Beautiful art. The sound of his breathing, the telltale click of the pistol's safety release are all I need, need to hear to pinpoint my target. Oof, he nails him. And the almost inaudible sound of my cane cutting through the air is like a loud radar beep to my super sensitive ears. I was right all the time. My senses are so ultra keen that I can do anything a man with eyesight can and do it better. He grabs his, his cane flying back out. I'll sneak up on him from behind and hey, he swung around just in time. How'd you know I was behind you? That's my secret, pal. No matter how softly he crept up behind me, his muffled footsteps sounded like heavy drum beats to me. Bro, knocks the gun out of his hand. Rapid footsteps hurrying away from me. He's trying to escape. Grabs him like, like, hold it, Speedy. I haven't dismissed the class yet. How does he do it? He doesn't miss a trick. A fixer says. Now, let's all settle down for a nice talk, unless you'd like another lesson with me. Slam closes the door. Look, you quiet. I'll handle this. I'm still the boss, the fixer says. Mister, whoever you are, you're in a mess of trouble. You're not getting away with coming here and roughing, roughing us up. We got a laws to protect innocent people. Sam, call the cops. He's picking up the phone to call the cops. Gangster. The sound of a hand picking up a receiver. This is almost too easy. Crack. Yo. Nails him. Fixer, I suspect you were responsible for the death of battling Murdoch. Why don't you confess now and save us all a lot of trouble?
You're nuts. I had nothing to do with it. I got a perfect alibi. I have another power I wasn't even aware of. I can hear his pulse rate. It's speeding up, indicating he's lying. My super sense of hearing is like a built-in lie detector. He's thinking. Maybe you do have an alibi. Maybe yours wasn't the finger that squeezed the trigger, but you gave the order, didn't you? No, no, stay back, stop him. You guys, don't let him get me. The fixer says. He knows too much. He might even know I'm the murderer. Can't take any chances. Oh, he pushes him out the window. So intent is Daredevil upon listening to the fixer's pulse rate to determine if he is the guilty man that his ultra-sharp hearing sense reacts a fraction of a second too slow. And it was me, but you'll never be able to do anything about it. Behind me, someone. A normal man with all his senses might be doomed in such a situation, but the moment the fearless daredevil feels himself hurling into space, his super keen ears catch the rustling of a flag as his lightning fast reflexes go into action. A flagpole alongside me, only one chance. Go grabs it with his cane, hooks it. Pressing the hidden stud which releases his cane handle at the same split second as he lunges out he stops his fall in midair got it grabs the pole from here on it's all the breeze swings over back through the window now then gents where were we Oof, he's back nails him Meanwhile, at the other side of town, Funny Matt doesn't answer. Maybe he's still asleep. Oh, the door's open. Hey, Lazy Bones, I thought I'd see if you need anything and... Matt, he's gone. Fuck, he's checking the office. Gosh, I wish he'd call me. I hate to think of poor Matt walking around town all alone with all the traffic in New York. I doesn't know that well. New accordions save up half. Let's see what's going on with their devil. Wow, look at the ads. Amazing Spider Man number 12. Fantastic Four number 26. On sale now. Look who's back, Dr. Octopus. So Foggy is looking for Matt. Let's see what's going on. I'll go up to the office. Maybe he decided to come here and get familiar with the place before starting work on Monday. But entering the new office, Foggy finds it unoccupied except for the most decorative accessory. Karen, today's your day off, Foggy says. I know, Mr. Nelson, but uh, I'm a stranger in New York and had no one to visit, so I thought I'd tidy up the office while I had a chance. Is Mr. Murdoch with you? No, matter of fact, I hope he'd be here. I don't like him wandering around town alone. I understand. What a pity such a wonderful, handsome man is so handicapped. Wow. I'd sure like to hear 
her talk about me in that adoring tone of voice. Don't let his blindness fool you, Karen. He's still the smartest, most capable, most courageous fellow I know. He doesn't even seem to mind not seeing. Fuck, he says. Here's something about him that makes a girl want to take him in her arms and... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. I had no right to speak that way. It's just that he seems to need someone to look after him. No, she's got a crush, maybe. Let's go back. Daredevil's back here. It would be hard to imagine Karen Page's feeling if she could see the handicapped man she is referring to at this moment. Out, all of you. I'm only interested in Slade and the Fixer. Boy, you don't have to tell me twice, they say. Come back, you rotten cowards. Don't leave us. Don't leave, leave us with them. Now, you two. I've learned what I wanted. Slade actually did the shooting, but you gave the orders. What good will it do you? You can't prove it. Yeah, where is your evidence, he says. Now, for my final bluff. They're, they're so worried now, they'll believe anything. Right here, I have a mini, miniature tape recorder concealed in my billy club. I tell the police all they need to know. He's got us, he says. Oh, he pulls a rug under his feet. Then, before da Daredevil can make a move, the fixer tries one last desperate maneuver. Quick, Slade, run, before he can get his balance. Oh, Matt's falling. Right. Oh, oh, he hurt himself. My arm, I wrenched it. I was a fool for being so overconfident i should have known they make one final try to escape they can't have gotten far i'll get them yet he says but racing around the corner slade and the fixer quickly mingle with the saturday afternoon shopping crowd oh, they're right there he'll never find us now in the middle of this crowd just the same keep moving there's no telling what that guy can do. Meanwhile, I can still smell the traces of the fixer's cigar smoke. I can follow the scent like a bloodhound, but I'll be able to get around easier in the crowd without a costume. He puts on his clothes again. And so, keeping one of the strangest pursuits on record, as a man without a sight, unerringly makes his way through a crowded avenue on the trail of two killers. I'm glad his cigar is a strong one. He might as well be telling me where he is, but he doesn't know it. Within minutes, the graceful, subtle figure of Matt Murdock has knifed through the unsuspecting crowd like a shadowy wraith. And then, I hope they're staying together. I want to bring them both to justice. The cigar scent is stronger now. I'm almost up to them. Slow down, Slate. We're safe now. He's nowhere in sight. Guess you're right. No one here, no one near us now, but that blind guy. We've lost him for sure. Come on, we'll duck into the 
subway station across the street and get off at Penn Station. We'll be out of town in an hour. That's what they think, man. Thanks. Hey, did you see how fast that blind guy pushed past us? Who cares? We got our own problems. They're going down to the subway. But unknown to the flea, fleeing duo, their problems are just beginning for directly ahead of them. Their footsteps are getting closer. I'll just make it. He's changing his clothes. Going somewhere, boys? It's him. It, it ain't possible, he says. Separate. He can't get us both. I was afraid they'd do that. They tried that. Right. That's what Matt says. I can tell by the unbroken sound of, the, of Slade's footsteps. There's no one between us, so it's safe to throw my cane. Throws his uh, cane at him, right? Good. He's tackling Slade. That means I'll escape. The fix is right. Arg blasted. He tripped me with that infernal stick of his. That'll slow him down while I go after the fixer. He's too far ahead. I need something to help me catch him. There's a trash here. This waste paper basket that I'm that, that I'm touching. Perfect. Seconds later, the rolling steel is making such a racket that I can't hear his footsteps, but I can easily detect the scent of his cigar. He's gonna get me, he's gonna get me. Fix is running, panicking. At that second, the beefy, overweight, fear filled figure of the fixer grasps and slumps to the ground as his panic stricken heart ceases to beat oh my my heart can't breathe oh he's having a heart attack no pulse no heartbeat seems like a heart attack will save the state the expense of a trial what's going on here the police show up right transit police just what the doctor ordered and so is this incoming train. He grabs onto the subway train. Follow me, boys. I've got a little job for you. Don't you know enough? To stay where I left you. Oof! He nails the guy again. The shooter. Now for my last bluff. The fixer just told us everything, Slade. He's innocent. You are Murdoch's murderer. The dirty crub. He's not gonna wiggle out of this. He's as guilty as I am. I only pulled the trigger, but he gave the orders. Hear him, boys? We sure did, but wait, who are you? The police say. The name's Daredevil. Remember it. You'll be hearing it again. I promise. <laughs> Not long afterwards, Matt, say I was worried about you, fella. Where have you been? Just out for a walk, Foggy. Out of been here sooner but as soon as you know i can't get around too fast right that's funny let's check out this last little bit we just had a call mr murdoch an accused murderer named slade 
He wanted to know if he, we'd defend him. But I turned him down from the police report. I was convinced he's guilty. Hope you don't mind, Matt. Mind? No. I don't mind at all. But I don't mind at all. Not a bit. Not one single bit, he says. Dad, wherever you are, I kind of hope you're resting easier now. Ah, his shadow is there, devil, right? That's cool. Don't waste a minute. We can't wait to hear what you think of Daredevil. Send your letters to Daredevil, CO Stanley, third floor, 655 Madison Avenue, New York, 21. And in the meantime, remember, this is just the beginning. We've only scratched the surface. Daredevil really hits his stride in issue number two when he faces his first supervillain. Don't miss it. D. That was really good. That was fantastic. That was actually one of the better Silver Age comics that uh, I've read. Fantastic, fantastic, right? Let's check this out. You be waza. Boys, men, I'll help you master. You be waza. I don't know what you be waza is. What's this one? Earn big money. Learn electric appliance at home in your spare time with the head on the right. Make money, get prizes. And he's looking for people who like to draw comic book art, right? Learning that. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice read. And no Spider-Man or Fantastic Four inside, right? Just on the front page, which is something a lot of comic book publishers do, right? especially Marvel and DC or did. Okay. That's it for now. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.